All right, so we're uh, finishing today our sixth lesson on sin. All right, so we had sin in the Old Testament, sin in the New Testament, uh, terms there, uh, aspects, many different facets of sin, mainly so that we can be without excuse, or we'll be judged by God's Word for our choices. And um, we are indeed without excuse. Um, we looked secondly at the nature of sin, the inheritance of sin, the imputation of sin, and personal sins. We have inherited sin. We also have sin imputed to us, Adam's sin imputed to the race. Then when Christ came, He bare our sins on His body. The man's sins were imputed or reckoned to Christ's account. And as a result of that, we have Christ's righteousness imputed to us. And then we looked at personal sins. <clears throat> and then that chart, I will just tell you for sure, the comparison of Inherited, imputed, and personal sins will, will be a chart that's on the test. Okay, so you, you definitely want to to know that. The scriptures involved with each, how th those uh, different aspects are transmitted. Uh, the consequence, the main consequence for each of those three sins, and then the remedy given uh, for them. So... That chart will summarize uh, the third and fourth uh, lessons on sin. Yes? What would be asked to write in um, chart form? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yep. It'll be, a, it'll be just a chart there for you to fill in. Mm hmm. All right. And then. Um, we started uh, last time on the Christian sin. The Christian sin. Uh, a aspect of sin or homartiology that apparently is not found in many of the older uh, systematic theologies, but in fact is going to be a main part of um, what we deal with in our lives and the lives of others. What about the Christian and his sin? Capital letter A, we looked at the, some biblical considerations of the Christian sin. We looked at walking in the light. We walk in the light. We're not sinless, otherwise we would be the light, right? We walk in the light. Okay, forgiveness. We looked at forgiveness applied differently to the lost and the saved. We looked at the Father is now propitious toward the suffering saint. We talked about the prodigal son there. Number five, the Christian life is supernatural. It's a supernatural life. And uh, the Christian will need a divine or constant recourse to divine forgiveness. Capital letter B, the Christian's conflict, threefold conflict. Christians threefold conflict. That's where we'll pick up today. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us a remedy for our sin. Thank you that you gave us a remedy for our sins, nature, Lord, and, and the sin uh, through salvation. And Lord, beyond that, you've given us a day-by-day -day remedy for uh, the world, the flesh, and the devil that are all around us. And we pray, Lord, that we would... Uh, be aware of these battles that we'll face. God, that we will have um, the uh, power within, we'll have the will, the desire, Lord, to not break fellowship with you. It's, it's a dangerous thing to uh, replace fellowship with you with something else that goes on in our life, whatever it is, a person, a friend, a, a thing, uh, an event, whatever it is that breaks our fellowship with you, Lord, help us to see that. Uh, Lord, help us to understand that effect and uh, to uh, ask forgiveness from that and to, to get back to that close 
fellowship, walking in the light. So we thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you that it's um, usable for us and, and it's uh, for us today. And pray that you'd uh, help us to apply it in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So capital letter B, the Christian's threefold conflict. These are three main points, the world, the flesh, and the devil. We've Probably if you're here at school for four years, you'll hear numerous uh, times about our enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Uh, and so we're going to go through this. The reason we hear about that is because um, the war never stops. Okay? We may stop fighting it, but the war against us never stops. It, does, it doesn't stop. So um, the devil, the world, the flesh... They're just watching for someone who um, is continuing to chop without the axe head, right? Just, uh, that's the guy that I'm going to get, right? That's who I want. And um, I'm just tired. I'm worn out. Enough. <laughs> Had a friend I knew... Uh, <clears throat> then we both went to different colleges and uh, the hall phone, pay phone, right outside room 10 rang one day in the guy's dorm, pay phone, put quarter in, or better yet, I'd like to make a collect call. <laughs> I'd like to make a collect call, that's about how that worked. Hurry, hurry, run to the phone, they're on long distance, hurry, it's long distance call, hurry, run to the phone, we don't want to waste time, it's long distance. Whenever there's a long distance call being made in the house, everybody's like in a, in a rush. Like, we're going to run, we're talk fast. And it's like, you know, money's flying out the door because it's a long distance call. When you dialed something besides your own area code before, it was serious business. <laughs> now it's like, who, who even uses area code? One plus an area? Who even does that anymore? What's one mean? Nothing. It used to be a big deal. Okay. Are you are you old enough to at least remember that? No, or no, like Matt Rally. No. No. Anyway, click call. It's roaming charges. Make it quick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so he's at another school, uh, in, in not far right away from here. And he's uh, said, "Hey, man, let's get together. We can go watch a movie." I said, "No." no. I'm a fair even Baptist college, you know. <laughs> I don't know, watch a movie. Oh, it's a funny movie, man. It's about these basketball players. Let's get together. We just watched it. I want you to come watch it with me. I said, Jamie, what, what happened? I mean, I was at your dad, was at his dad's church for a week, and we kept in contact a little bit. He goes, I said, oh, man, that is great. He said, you know what? He said, you just, just, just get a pass and come off and meet me at such and such a place. And uh, he said, I just, I just want to see a little bit of how the other side lives. I just want to see, I just want to see a little bit. I've been, I've been, you know, in this dad's a pastor and I've been in this church. My whole, I just, just really want to see how the other side lives just for a little while. And I said, well, I can't believe, you know, we're having this conversation. I said, but... Um, I don't want to see how the other side lives. And, uh, I mean, call me if, if you want to do what's right or want to get together and do what's right. It's fine. But I said, uh, that's not going to pay. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just like he got to a place where everything that you'd heard preached before, you're just willing to kind of throw away because he wanted to see how the other side lives. What's the other side? What is the other side? The other side's the world. I want to see how they live. And that... Something was in his heart, never dealt with or came in, and he had gotten tired, or he was chopping without the axe head, right? Still had, still had the form, still had the form, still was in the youth group, still was in the Bible college. But inside, the devil, the flesh, the world was watching, and they found an opening. And when the temptation came, when the temptation came, what happened? What happened? No, nope. gave in. No fight. 
Try it. No, no, Holy Spirit, not in him. Power of God, not in him. Okay. I wish everybody could listen to that sermon yesterday once a week. Yeah. I really do. Because this is a place where that sermon fits the most. The most. It's right here. And in this conflict here, <clears throat> we have the world. Uh, <clears throat> so, number one, the first conflict's the world. Um, letter A, the meaning of the world. World really in the in the New Testament is three different three different aspects the way that the world is used. Okay. In this context, we're talking about a, a system. Okay. But the word world is not always bad in the New Testament, is it? Can you think of some times in the New Testament when the word world is good? Trevor? Go into all the world. Okay, go into the world. Okay, go into the world. What does the world represent there? What is, I mean, really, what's a, what, what, what is meant by world, Jared? People. People. Okay, so the world can be the inhabitants of the world. Okay, John 3.16 uses the word world the same way, doesn't it, right? God so loved the world. He wasn't talking about nature. I'm sure God loves nature. He made it. But he's not talking about God so loved the world. He's talking about the people that he gave his only begotten son. So the, the, the world is used in the sense there of, um, of people. The world is also used in the sense of uh, creation. Right? <clears throat> uh, God created the world and all that therein is. So, so the word world can be creation. It can be the people specifically in creation, but it can also be this present system that exists in today's world. And that's the issue here with regard to the conflict of the Christian. It's not with the people. It's not with creation. It's with the system that exists today. What system or what regulates uh, this world system? Well, Satan is called what term that includes the word world? What term for Satan or name for Satan includes the word world, Rick? The God of this world. The God of this world. So is, is Satan the God of creation? No. Is he the God of all the people? Every inhabitant of the world? No. But he's the God of this world. He's the God of the system that predominates in this world. Okay? He's the God of that. So this system originated with Satan and is opposed to God. That's the aspect of world that we're talking about here. Okay? This worldly system, or the cosmos, this is the Greek word, is characterized by its ideals and entertainments. I did not bring it. I, I forgot two things today. I'm kind of irritated that I forgot these. One was to follow up on uh, the doctrine of man and man's creation. I got a, a, a brief interview uh, quoted with Ben Carson and uh, about creation. Have you seen that? Did you see that? They interviewed him about creation, and, and they were kind of ridiculing his religious belief that God is creator. And uh, so while they're going, he said uh, in there, well, you know, it says there in Genesis 1 1 that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. But then there's a gap after that. And we don't know what happened during that gap. I mean, it's obvious that uh, there's, you know, years pass by. So it, very, very easily there, he, he from his own mouth described a, a theistic evolution. Right? He says, but there is an, a designer. There's the, there, you can see the order, the design, because it wasn't denying a creator, um, but he was um, definitely not um, taking Genesis 1 literally. Okay, so you see that uh, <coughs> there with regard to the creation of the world. But the second thing was in the, the Chicago paper Sunday, 
and uh, they'll have things that'll advertise different books that have recently been written and uh, the authors will go to local bookstores, main, mainly in Chicago, but they'll set up uh, their books that they're selling and then they'll give a brief discussion about the book and then the idea is you'll meet them, you'll ask them questions about it and then you'll buy it. Uh, this section was events, literary events to take your children to. And uh, there was something each day of the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Wednesday, I believe it is. Either Wednesday or Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, there is a book for middle grade uh, students, students in middle school. A book for students in middle school to be a textbook. Just been written and published entitled um, The... Um, like a beginner's history or something like that. History to uh, gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual peoples. And highlighting such historical figures as, and they listed one uh, semi-general from the Revolutionary War and another uh, social activist um, from, uh, I don't know, late 1800s, 1900s named Jane Addams. Um, uh, come, come hear a discussion on this book. No, just, just like it's everyday, normal thing. Yeah, we don't, this person's wrote this, this, person, this person wrote a middle school textbook giving the, highlighting the history, like the great history or the noble history of, of these people. That's the world system. And in America, the world system, generally speaking, was seen as wrong by more than those that saw it as right. And, and, and you're kind of watching it tilt now, and it tilts really fast. That's what's kind of frightening, how quickly the world system becomes the norm and how those that reject the world system become really, we really weird. I mean, we, we go from weird to capital W weird really fast. We're, we're getting, the, they're starting to capitalize the W on us right now. We're really weird. Uh, what do you mean? This is normal. This is, no well, five years ago it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Five years ago it wasn't. Even the most liberal president ever, it wasn't okay for him to be really open about that five, uh, you know, six years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Now, whoa, what's, it's changed that fast. This world system is always going to be pushing against you and me and all of us. So we just stop fighting and we lose our will. Like, eh, don't care. I want to see what the other side lives like. Watch out. Watch out for how the other side lives like. I had a roommate that left college because he wanted to do the same thing. He came for a year and man, he just never, he just never, it was just a big party to him. And uh, all he did was complain about everything the whole time. And uh, he just wanted to see how the other side lived. So he got out, really got away from the Lord. I think he probably was away here, but he was, again, chopping without the axe head. <laughs> um, but, you know, he... Uh, Saturday morning, we walked in for bus meeting. Somebody said, did you hear what happened to so-and-so? I said, no. Well, he driving his own truck home from work last night, stopped at the bar before he went home, got drunk, drove off the road and killed himself. Mm -hmm. Left a wife, kid, miserable life. Just wanted to see how the other side lived. World system got him. He said, okay. He stopped fighting, didn't want to fight, liked it, went after it, and he got his payday. He got his reward. You know? About 12 years ago, I got a phone call from, a, uh, from home, and a uh, guy went to school. He's one year older than me, went to school. He just loved the world. He just loved the world. All the way through Christian school, he, he loved the world. And uh, he got out, very successful uh, job, very well-paying job. I mean, a job that would pay his entire, uh, a good career, on track for that. But uh, he loved the world. And uh, he had been in church, and he got out, 
And so he uh, went home one day and wrote a note to his wife and to his little son, who was a junior, named after him, and put the gun in his mouth and killed himself. He loved the world. He got his, he, that's, what the, that's the world system, especially when it's a Christian that goes that way. That's where the, that's where the really, you shake your head, judgment comes because um, uh, too much is given, much is required. Sure, both of those guys heard about the world. Um, <clears throat> so this is a system. The world system is death. Right? It's death. Been waiting for this to happen, and this happened just this week. You probably heard, I don't mean to laugh, it's not funny, um, but it's almost predictable about the uh, zombie conference in Fort Myers, Florida. Did you hear about that? Did anybody hear about that? You didn't hear about that. You guys listen to, 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 to the WBBM? No, I can't stand that. You should listen every once in a while. Um, yeah, zombie convention, not conference, convention. It's conference. Got to register. We're going to have the alumni meeting on uh, Wednesday breakfast. Pastor's luncheon on Tuesday. Uh, convention. And they're all out in the street. Zombies, right? You, mm -hmm. you're right. You've seen the zombie guys. They, that's the win. The adults, that just makes them happy to dress up like a zombie. They're trick-or-treating in Laporte last Saturday, way early. I don't know why. You should have seen. I mean, the, there's many adults dressed up out there as their little kids. And, 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 and at least 20 of the adults are dressed up like zombies. I mean, the blood just... Yeah. Anyway, so the down the convention, somebody joins in the zo zombie convention fun and pulls a gun out and starts shooting, oh. shot one person dead, oh. and, and shot four others. The police come, and they're trying to find <laughs> who did the shooting. Well, who, who's the suspect there? Um, is it... Freak or weirdo or what? What a perfect cover to get away with that. Yeah. Well, zombies. What are they? It's just demonism. It's just glorifying sa Satanism. Death goes with that. Mm -hmm. So somebody saw plenty of death on the zombie stuff, I guess, right? And he just jumped in with the spirit of things and said, "Hey, let's really make it a zombie convention." Since uh, and they start shooting. And, and again, I don't mean to laugh, but it, I just, you, you see the police in their uniforms, and everybody there, all these zombies are real serious all of a sudden, like, oh, I can't believe, you know. It. World is, is, is um, a mess, and it's funny, even the, uh, the, the uh, other countries are noticing. They're, they're saying, quotes, this, this week, America is that, it's at a tipping point for morals. It's at a tipping point for even uh, it keeping itself together. And all that can be so discouraging. But it can also be a warning to us. Don't love the world. Don't love this system. Is not your friend. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Somebody in here is going to decide the world is your friend. I, I wish that wasn't the... I hope I'm wrong. But in this group's eyes, somebody... I mean, I went to college. My roommate decided it. And a guy in school, and that's just a couple. You know people that have already decided that the world is their friend. And they're, it'll lie to them for a little while. It'll lie to them for a little while. And wrap them up and tie them up and bind them together with the cords. And then, too late. So this is a system created by Satan. And his ideals, it's promoted by his entertainments. And they become an allurement to the Christian who is in this world, but not a part of this world, right? We're in the world, but not of the world. But we are in it. That means it's, it's around us. That means the allurements in whatever form gets you most, whatever form appeals to you, it's there all the time. Counterfeits for the things of God are a part of the world. Counterfeits for the things of God, right? Denying the power, having a form of godliness. Boy, we need divine guidance. 
We need to walk in the light. We need to walk in the Word. We need to walk in the Spirit. Walk. That means step by step. It's around us, surrounds us. Secondly, the flesh. Flesh. <clears throat> or flesh. We studied the flesh, right? We won't review all that again, but we studied, we studied the flesh, right? The three parts of men, body, soul, spirit. Uh, <clears throat> and that flesh is uh, described for us uh, throughout uh, Romans, Romans 7, Romans 8. Romans 8 gives us the victory over the flesh, which is the indwelling Holy Spirit. Listening to a Bible commentator this morning about uh, Ephesians 5. Every morning, he'd say, we have the Holy Spirit living in us, but be filled with the Spirit. Go to the gas station. Fill her up. I've got places I've got to go. I need that fuel to get there. Every morning, Lord, I die daily. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Yes, we have the Holy Spirit, but submit to Him. Surrender that will to Him. The flesh comes in otherwise. The flesh will lie to us. Number three, the devil. The devil. He uses his wiles. The word wiles <clears throat> sometimes used militarily as a strategy. A strategy. There's a war council against you today. Satan is the leader of that war council. It's against you, right? Your adversary has a plan. We say God has a plan for your life, and, and that's true, right? God's will. Satan has a strategy for you as well. Well, why me? Well, because you are um, uh, not fitting into his system. You're not submitting to his ways. So he's going to try to lure you deceive you. In fact, he'll change himself into an angel of light in order to get you. All right? Your adversary. Ephesians 6 gives us the way to defeat Satan. And you know, it just takes a little bit of time. It says, put on the whole armor of God. Six, seven pieces, right? If you count prayer, seven parts to the armor. Mm -hmm. It takes some time. How often should a soldier put on his armor? What happens if he gets bored putting it on and off? That had to be, can you imagine, especially that old armor? I take uh, every day, put it on and take it off and put it on. Today I'm just going to go, wow, I'm just going to go armorless today out there in the battle. Right? Easy target. Every, every enemy knows, well, there's 20 guys out there armored up. There's one guy out there, you know, in, a, uh, in his uh, tank top. <laughs> um, guess who's the first to go down, right? Let's pick that guy off first. All right. It was so foolish to think we're going to run into the battle that day the same way. Mm -hmm. Who's the first to get picked off? Oh, yeah. uh, maybe I escaped that day. I didn't talk with the Lord in the morning. I did read my Bible and I made it through that day. Gambling with your life, right? Gambling with your life. Satan knows what's happening. He notices who has the armor on and who doesn't. It cannot take that for granted. You cannot get um, tired of putting the armor on. Victory is through the whole armor of God. The whole armor. The panoply is the word. Completely armored. So, <clears throat> what's our provision for the sin? Our provision here, capital letter C. We looked at the threefold conflict, world, flesh, and devil. The threefold fold provision. None of this is new, is it? <laughs> None of this is new. Um, you know, but really a coach that, that does well with a team is one that can get them to uh, be happy with and to see the value of the basics, to keep doing the basics. I heard a football coach say one time, when it 
boils down to it, football is blocking and tackling. Mm -hmm. Block, well, that doesn't sound very, you know, you can't do an end zone dance <laughs> with blocking and tackling. That's, that's the good part, the end zone dance. Yes, what are they going to do today? End zone dance. But blocking is the basics. It's the basics. And uh, coaches try to get their team to set their own uh, purposes aside so they can be a team player and to stick to the basics. And uh, these are very basic. The Christian's threefold provision, number one, is the Word of God. I'll just give you some verses. You'll, you'll know them. Psalm 119.11. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. It is the, as the word abides in the believer that he's in the place of spiritual achievement or victory. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. John 15, the Word of God. Secondly, the interceding Christ. The interceding Christ. Christ interceded for Peter. Luke 22, I have prayed for thee. Right? I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. Peter did fail, didn't he? did fail. Number two, he intercedes for the saints. John chapter 17, as he was about to go to the cross in John 17, Jesus says, I pray not for these only, his disciples, but also for them which shall believe on my name. Them which shall believe on my name. Just before he went to the cross, there in the garden, he prayed for you. He prayed for you. Well, he should have been really worried about what he was about to go through. No, he prayed for you. That's because he's an intercessor. He's our high priest. Um, John 17 intercedes for us. Hebrews 7.23, let's look there quickly. Hebrews 7.23 They truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth forever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession uh, for them. He ever liveth to make uh, intercession. <clears throat> Number three, the third provision is the indwelling spirit. The indwelling spirit. Every victory for the Christian is dependent upon the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit. Every victory. And uh, this victory is described in Romans chapter 8. That entire chapter. Alright, so we have a conflict and we have a provision for that conflict. Word of God, the interceding ministry, priestly ministry of Jesus Christ, and the indwelling Spirit of God. And then, uh, letter D, I'm going to end with um, a uh, <clears throat> um, eight points of what are the effects... Uh, when a Christian sins, what effect does that have on a Christian? And I'll give you these. We'd like to look at the verses, and I'll give you these, and then we'll be done. The effects of a Christian sin. All right, so number one, the light of God turns to darkness. The light of God turns to darkness. 1 John 1, 6. When a Christian sins, 1 John 1, 6. Ben, I'll have you read that 
verse. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Okay. <laughs> And then uh, chapter 2, verse 10, Rick, I'll have you read that. 1 John 2, 10. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is no occasion of stumbling in him. All right, and then go ahead and read verse 11 as well. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he doeth, because that darkness hath blinded, blinded, blinded his own. So walking in darkness and blinding, um, <clears throat> this is the light of God turns to darkness. All right, number two, there's a loss of joy. There's a loss of joy. 1 John 1, 4. Uh, Barak will have you read that, 1 John 1, 4. Word full there means filled up, filled to the top. Filled where? In you. In you, in me. Fullness of joy. That's what uh, the book of 1 John was written for. Fullness of joy. Filled up. Filled all the way up. Filled with joy. Is that where you're at? Or is there darkness? Okay. Loss of joy is an effect of sin. For a Christian. John 15 11. Josh will have you read John 15 11. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Okay. <clears throat> my joy might remain in you uh, and that your joy might be full. Full. God wants us full. Why? Because then there's no room left for the world or the flesh or the devil. Why? Because we're, we're filled with joy. We're filled with the Lord's joy. But if you, don't, if you have a little bit of joy, you're leaving a lot of room for the world. You have just occasional joy, you're giving a lot of time for the flesh. If your joy is on and off, then on and off, the devil's going to have uh, an opportunity to get you. He wants us to be filled with the Spirit, full of joy, full of love, full of the Holy Ghost, right? Why? Because so there's no room for anything else. Don't leave room for anything else. Um, <clears throat> Psalm 51, 12. Psalm 51, 12. Shem will have you read that. Psalm 51, 12. Loss of joy, Psalm 51, 12. Well, David knew what it was like to be filled with joy, but after this, he knew what it was like to be filled with the flesh. And what did he want after he had had the joy of the Lord and the lust of the flesh? What, what in the end, did he look back and say, which did, he, which, would he, which did he want to have? He wanted that joy back. He wanted that joy back. That flesh profited him nothing, right? But just perpetual uh, misery and heartache and guilt and shame and loss of fellowship. The light of God had turned to darkness. Um, when he had had both, he looked back and said, give, give me the joy. Please restore that joy to me. And God's forgiveness is wonderful, isn't it? God's forgiveness uh, did, did do that. Um, but take it from a guy that had, had both. He says here, I'll take that joy back, please. Please give me that joy back. Number three, loss of fellowship. 1 John 1, 3. Loss of fellowship. 1 John 1, 3. Jared, we'll have you read that. Okay, and then verses 6 and 7, Dustin. 
we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie, we assume we do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. All right, so effect of a Christian sin is loss of fellowship. Number four, <clears throat> the loss of the experience of uh, imparted divine love or the loss of knowing, knowing or experiencing God's um, love. First, doesn't mean God stops loving us, but ex knowing it and experiencing it. Uh, 1 John 2, 5. Trevor will have you read that. 1 John 2, 5. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. All right, and then Alan uh, 2, 15 through 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lost thereof, but he that, he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Okay. And then cha chapter 4, verse 12, Devante. Chapter 4, verse 12. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God will love us, and His love is perfected in us. His love is perfected uh, in us. Number 5, loss of peace. Loss of peace. <laughs> 1 John 3, 1 John 3, 4 through 10, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. The devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Loss of peace, number five. Number six. Loss of confidence in prayer. Loss of confidence in prayer. Verse number 6. 1 John 3, 21. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him, because we keep His commandments. And do those things which are pleasing in His sight. Loss of confidence toward God in prayer. Number seven, loss of confidence at the coming of Christ. 1 John 2.28 And now, little children, abide in Him, that when He shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before Him at His coming. Do you want the Lord to come back? Mm -hmm. Right now. Well, um, your attitude towards sin uh, is what will answer that. Well, not, not right now. <laughs> not right. Or sh that'd be great. Be great. Right. What's your attitude toward the second coming? That's dictated by your um, attitude towards sin. And then number eight, the effects of the Christian sin is there's the sentence of God's chastisement. The sentence of God's chastisement. Hebrews chapter 12, we won't read through that, but whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, scourgeth every son who receiveth. This can be punishment. Hebrews 12, it can be church discipline. Matthew 18, and it can be physical death, as seen in the account of the Lord's Supper service. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. So, physical death. Sentence of God's chastisement. So, the effects of a Christian sin are many, and uh, many uh, such uh, magnitude that it should, uh, it should 
help us to realize how bad it is when we sin and how wonderful it is and all the great benefits when we, when we don't. And the provision for us is God's Word. Christ is interceding for us right now. He ever lives to make intercession for us. And the Holy Spirit, right, filling our lives, we have everything that we need uh, to uh, overcome and to be victorious. We have everything that we need. God just needs your will. God just needs your submission to Him. Um, and then, what a, what a great life. What a wonderful way to live. It's great to live in joy, isn't it? It's terrible to live double-minded. It's a terrible way to live. Unstable in all your ways, like a wave driven with the, uh, uh, dr uh, driven of the wind and tossed. All right, so... Um, We'll have our test we've reviewed, and um, we'll have just the verses from Romans uh, on the test, none from Isaiah 53. And any last questions? Yes? Where does the test start at? What? Hamartiology, doctrine of sin. Yep. Okay, any other questions? None of them are, none of these tests are cumulative. So just since, yeah, the last one. All right, we'll see you.